What's inside three old electronic toy guitars? Is there anything worth salvaging? And are any of them suitable for making into a new MIDI instrument? Let's find out. These guitars vary in age, technology, and quality, but all three guitars have some things in common. A cording fretboard, a strumming pad, and a small control panel. Two guitars have whammy bars and USB connectors. The white-bodied guitar also has a much more sophisticated control pad. The oldest and simplest of the guitars, the blue one, has eight frets but only three push buttons for controls. It also uses an antique connection plug. The two newer guitars have five fretting chord buttons. So this is going to be a fun teardown with some bonus fun as we compare and contrast how these three different guitars are constructed. Let's flip them over and start unbuttoning them. We'll start with the simplest and oldest guitar, the blue one. It has three PCBs connected with wires and ribbon cables. We'll see that same basic configuration in all three guitars. The fretboard cording buttons are hard plastic shells that squish the soft elastomeric pads on the PCB to close the circuit. This is a common construction technique and we'll see it again and again in all the other guitars. In this guitar, the strumming pad also uses the elastomeric buttons, and even the three control buttons use them. Notice that in this guitar, there are no ICs or microcontrollers on the PCB boards, and all the buttons come on their own plastic panel, so they can be separated from the rest of the body. That makes these systems easy to reuse and remount elsewhere. But! There are a bunch of diodes scattered around the boards. What do they do? Well, they allow eight buttons to use only four wires to send signals. It's ingenious, really, and very, very old school. It's so old that it uses a game port connector that sends simple binary on-off signals to the computer via multiple lines. Not digital commands through a single wire, just simple on-off states for each wire it's worth a separate video just to understand the cleverness of this configuration. So I'll save the controls and their mounts, but this guitar isn't what I want for turning into a new MIDI instrument. Now, let's look at the black bodied guitar. It also has three basic boards, the chords, the strummer, and the controls. The cording PCB in this guitar still uses the elastomeric caps and hard buttons, but the strumming pad is a lot more sophisticated. It has lots of circuits and chips and a black blob on it for the controller. This board is the brain of the unit. It's also too complicated for me to hack. The control pad also uses elastomeric buttons, but it also has a USB connector. It's power only. You can tell just by looking at the circuit. It also has two LEDs. This is a simple enough board that I could probably hack it. Probably save this one. The whammy bar uses a potentiometer connected to a cam with a spring. The pressure from the spring returns the potentiometer to its neutral state when you stop moving the whammy bar. When you let go, it just snaps back to center. They only use two of the tangs on the potentiometer, but the third one's there. Uh, so this will be easy to hack and reuse. It's a basic configuration for most family bars, so it's good to understand. Let's take a closer look at the main board under the strumming pad. Yep, way too sophisticated for me to hack. It's basically useless to me. Luckily, the strumming pad on this guitar uses two really nice Cherry MX style switches instead of the elastomeric pads. These switches I can desolder and reuse for any number of applications. And the board itself is pretty enough to use as a base for a steampunk lap shade or a book cover, so I'll save it as a decorative item. This isn't what I'm looking for in a MIDI guitar. Again, I'll probably save the boards and the controls, some if not all of them, uh, but not the guitar itself. The white-bodied guitar is the newest and the fanciest of the bunch, but it still has the same basic configuration, three PCBs and a whammy bar. The cording board on this one ha also has an interesting circuit with two touch points in each cap. This could be fun to explore. I'll need to decode it, but I think this might be a little routing magic to give you additional capabilities.
In this guitar, the brains are on the control board underneath the control panel. It's a really high quality board, but way too complicated for me to hack. But the PCB under the strumming pad has those Cherry MX style high quality switches. And the PCB is simple enough to hack and reuse. Score! The whammy bar, it's a lot like the previous one, spring tension potentiometer, but this one uses all three connections, so there's no need to add the third line to connect it directly to an Arduino. The control panel on this guitar is the most sophisticated of the bunch. The other guitars just had simple push buttons. This guitar has a two-way toggle, a four-way toggle, and a button which has a clear cover and four LED indicator lights underneath. Now I can never hack the board itself, but the spacing of the components is close enough to the whole pitch of a standard perf board that I could theoretically mount some standard clicky switches and reuse the knobs to recreate the same functionality. This case is just translucent enough that I can put some NeoPixels, an Arduino, a MIDI or soundboard, and even an amplifier. It's a high quality, sturdy case, easy to work with. So I think this is the guitar that I'll keep for my project. Get more details about this project and others on my blog or Facebook page. See the links in the description below. And be sure to hit subscribe to get all the latest projects here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and go make something fun.